Hi, my name is Max and this is the LaTeX Beginners Course. In the last videos we expressed equations with LaTeX and we managed to include graphics into our document. We also discovered that LaTeX automatically enumerates these equations and figures and of course the sections. But LaTeX can do even more than that, it can help us reference these objects. And that's the topic of our video today. And this is really easy, in the first step we don't even need any additional packages. So let's start right away, maybe with some math. Uh, and then, let's say we want to reference this equation here, equation 1. Um, so, before we can reference it, we have to give it a label. A label is basically just a short name that only we can see and we can choose freely. But it should be unique and memorizable, so we don't get confused. Um, the command for this is back, just, just backslash label. And then, let's say eqn, because... Yeah, this is an equation that defines n. Now I can reference it. I already prepared it. Now I can reference here uh, with the uh, command ref. And then the label. In this case, we only have one label in this document. And let's go. And we have to compile two times because in the first step it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, here we are. And we can do this with basically any object in this text. So, if you want uh, to reference another equation, maybe here the matrix. Um, so, label matrix. Uh, and then label this subject, subsection here. Label math2. And then go to the figures and select maybe this one here so label just need the caption label and then picture and because this was the png file png good so now let's reference this stuff go here then and ref and then the matrix in section and then ref math 2 and then also see figure and then picture png good let's try this and try again and yeah here we are, now we want to reference equation 1 and 6 in section 3.2 and also see figure 2. And there's also another referencing command if you want the number of the page displayed. So for example, figure 2 here is on page 8. So if you say no, that's a new command on page backslash page ref and then picture png. Now LaTeX should say figure 2 on page Eight. And it does. And also the amazing thing about LaTeX, as you already know, if we say now new page, um, then the figure will of course be on page 9, but LaTeX will also recognize this. And yeah, here, figure 2 on page 9. So this changes automatically. In order to show you the next issue, I'm just including here some random words extra. Uh, and then compile. And what you see now is, yeah, is that the word page and the number 9 are separated through a line break. And this just looks awful under no circumstances a word and a belonging, and a belonging number should be separated. Um, so we have to do something about it. And the solution here is a non-breaking space. It does exactly what its name says. We just include here and the sign, you will find it on your keyboard, um, and no space. And this will tell LaTeX to not break the space. And yeah, here we have page 9 on a new line. So, as a first short resume, I want to give you two steps to include in a regular LaTeX workflow. The first one is that every equation and every figure you create and every new section you begin, you give it a label. So afterwards, you won't have uh, won't have a problem referencing it, even if it wasn't your intention in the first place. And the other one is that every time you reference, 
you use a non-breaking space. Not only where you see it's necessary, but everywhere, so afterwards you can change the text and you won't have bad surprises. But we have only reached the tip of the iceberg and now I want to give you a short guide on really awesome referencing. So first we have to include three packages uh, in this exact order, because otherwise we will get some annoying error messages. The vario ref package, the hyper ref package and the clever ref package. Only one R here. Um, first compile and we have to compile two times because the first time we get an error message. Okay, so the first change is that the hyperref package has transformed every reference into a hyperlink. So, if, for example, if you want to go to equation 1, we just click on here and here's equation 1. And then section 3.2 is here. Uh, and also figure 2, which is here. <laughs> Good. Um, well, this will only work in a PDF document, obviously, but I think it's pretty cool. And also, these hyperlinks are now in our table of contents. So, if we want to go to figures, just click on here, and now we are on figures. So, I think this is a great start. Then, the varioref and cleverref packages give us some new options and also some new referencing commands. But in order to get them working, we first have to change our labels. And I'm not changing the old ones, but let's get the new ones right. So, uh, maybe here for the cases environment. The label for an equation always has to start with an EQ column and then cases maybe. And then for a vector the same, EQ vec. And then maybe again for a section math here. Um, here it is SEC column math. And then let's do the figure. This one we have already labeled. Then let's do this one. Uh, for figures, it's FIG column. And then maybe one. Okay, now the referencing. I'm just writing here C. Then the command for clarity of CREF. And here EQ VEC maybe. Uh, then in, again, CREF, sec, math, um, and maybe a figure has something to do with it, fig1, and then a dot. So let's see what happens. Yeah, and what LaTeX has created here is C equation 7 in section 3 and figure 1. So. LaTeX has recognized that our reference EQVec, that our label EQVec belongs to an equation and that it has put in the word and also for the section, also for the figure. So this is taken care of automatically and this is clearly amazing because now you don't have to worry about the words and you don't have to worry about the non-breaking spaces anymore because this is taken care of as well. Uh, then you might prefer that here uh, not eq dot is displayed, but an actual word equation. Um, this is easy. You just um, go here and put in an option for the clever of package, and the option for no abbreviation is simply no abbrev. So now it should be displayed without abbreviation. So the whole word. And what do we get? Here it is, C equation 7 in section 3 and figure 1. Perfect. Then let's try the varioref package. Um, the command for this is simply vref and then maybe eq cases. And let's go. And you see, yeah, you see that now it says C equation 8 on page 6. So you don't need the page ref command anymore. The varial ref command already includes this. And this is uh, working great together with the clever ref command because uh, you see that here also says equation and not the abbreviation of equation. You also can reference multiple targets in one command. This is working for clever ref as well as varial ref. I'm just showing this with varial ref. And you just have to uh, type in one label and then 
a comma, no space, and then the other label. So uh, the one we already referenced here. Good. Let's see. And here we are. Now it says C equation 7 and 8 on page 6. So if you go to page 6, here is equation 8 and here's equation 7. So it would also work if they were on different pages. So I think this is really awesome and you should absolutely try this out for yourself. The last thing I want to show you today is another feature of the HyperRef package, just typesetting URLs. Because with normal LaTeX this isn't possible just with HyperRef package. Um, now we have a new command which is URL and then inside the braces just any URL that we might want to have displayed in the document. So for example www.youtube.com. Uh, so now this should be in document and yeah we can click on it. Fine. So let's have a look what did we do today. The first thing that catches the eye are of course our hyperlinks, which are displayed in red boxes. Um, I think if you find that annoying you can disable this, but I'll leave it for now. I think these hyperlinks are really cool because now we can jump inside the document, it's really convenient. And then we have our referencing options, uh, for example the classical reference, just the ref command and also the page ref command. But then also our advanced options, for example, CleverRef and VarioRef. Another thing I like about these advanced options is that unlike sections and figures and pages, equations are displayed in the round brackets, which actually, actually makes sense because here they are displayed in round brackets as well. So yeah, this is just good style, I think. So let us know what you think about these referencing solutions. Which do you use? Or if you don't use them at the moment, if you haven't tried them out, go ahead. So we really hope that we could help you with this video. Um, in the next video we want to talk about tables. I would love to see you then. Until then, thanks for watching.